just hit and what a what don't you? <laughs> we laugh. Okay, another surprise. We found rust in the bow of the boat. We'll get it sorted. We're a Kiwi couple living in Australia who brought a 57 foot steel trawler after she sunk in a flood and was pulled from the sea. We're now bringing her back to life. She'll be crewed by supporters from around the world. Welcome aboard. So, rust. It doesn't normally show up like a big dimple like this one here. This is me sandblasting and grinding and whatever. You can sort of see I've ground all the paint away. I've also sandblasted this out when we blasted the boat. Um, and therefore it's dug out a lot of that rust. Normally, it'll show up like this. Tiny little pinhole that has a seepage of rust coming out of it. Now this was basically painted over, um, you couldn't see this bit here, you could see the seepage and we know that that's gone all the way through because of the seepage coming out. So here's one down here that doesn't have the seepage but it gives you an idea of just how sort of hidden it can be. It just looks like a little rust blemish, you wouldn't think anything of it but that panel will be knackered on the other side. And there's one on this side up here, you can sort of see this little bit of seepage just there, same deal. That panel will be buggered on the inside so we need to pull that open um, and figure out what's going on. So what the plan is is basically open up this side so we can look onto the back of that panel there. I think we'll probably pad weld that one up there and then this one here will be replacing some of the steel I'd say. Jess is a big fan, big fan when it comes to using the traditional arts of Morse code to tap out a sounding on a steel hull. Here she's determining yes this bit here is rusty. Like if it was really thin, you'd expect a little dint or something. Yeah. I but think you, it's you really can, localized corrosion, eh? It is, eh? I'm really hoping. Just feel weird, maybe concrete behind you. I think I think there's a bulkhead here okay. and I think there's like sort of staggered concrete. Yeah. Um and the bow was always nose down, so if we actually get rid of the concrete it's not a bad thing. Like from a trim point of view. Good luck. Yeah, thanks. First cut is the deepest. <laughs> Baby, I know. Um, <laughs> How sorry. can you be so happy cutting into the hull again? I'm really disturbed by this. I'm so sorry. I should never have done those moves. <laughs> got you all worked up. <laughs> um, all right. So, what, am I, what do you want me to do? I'm thinking, attack this first and just see what we're working with. Yeah. Well, if you're okay with it, can you only cut one bit to get into it, get some get eye, a mirror in. get an eyesight on it? Yeah. Because if we can pad weld the other little spots, that'd be awesome. Well. I have to sand, if I'm doing any pad welding, I have to sandblast. Yeah. Yeah. Which is which is possible, but yeah. I don't know if I can see that one from here because I think I think the bulkhead is there and it's got a small hole in it, so I'm not 100% certain how much I'm going to see. Um, it's very interesting that it's a line. Yeah. It's like there's a wee bit of distance, but it's really down the line, eh? I think it's actually simple to explain. This is the hardest bit to maintain. I yeah. think they've never ever hmm. done anything with it painted it properly or whatever you know yeah once you've got one hole you've yeah. got oxygen yeah everything else starts to go yeah yeah it's funny how it's always like a little hole eh like, yeah telltale sign is that and you just know that it's cactus behind it yeah yeah no, and i suppose i'm rushing. thinking when we did this patch here um, it was just one tiny little hole and then it was that whole thing that was corroded out That's why I'm sort of thinking I don't think we're gonna just get away with nothing on these ones I think they'll be similar because it'll be the same steel So you've got to cut a square out to have a good look. Well, I'll, I'll cut like along that weld and then maybe I don't know here somewhere And I'll, I'll do some radiuses up just do you know what I mean so that I can do it if it's if it is only that size that I need to cut That's all I'll do um, And then if I need to go bigger, I'll just I'll just grow the hole. All right Cool. Here's a little wish and um, intention to the sea gods and goddesses. Please may this not be a big panel that needs to be replaced. That would be very good. This is a handy little gadget that I built a few years ago. It's a piece of 25 by 3 mil steel with a couple of neodymium magnets and some timber that I just use as handles. Being thin like this, it allows me to bend it over the curve of the boat. It's perfect for getting straight edges on the boat. For any panels that we want to cut out of the boat, we always do radius corners. I like to use 5 inch discs just because then I've always got the same radius and there's plenty of those around. 
As a general rule on these plates when I replace them, whether it's in the hull or the deck or anywhere, I like to use a 5 inch grinder with a 1mm cut off disc to do the straights, that way I get a beautiful straight line on the plate, and then I use the plasma cutter to do any of the curves or the radiuses in the corners. It's just a simple way of making these plates nice and fast. The corners can be done with a grinder, but it takes a lot longer. Quite corroded down in there and then along there so that plate needed to be replaced so up here it's about six mil down here you can see it's maybe four mil probably a little bit thinner in there three mil something like that It was about here that our plasma cutter died, I need to take it in and get it repaired, so I thought I'll press on with a grinder. starting to get into it this is cement so from here down is basically cement you can sort of see there's rusty steel sort of embedded in it but this whole block is cement you can tell I bashed it with a hammer just there and you can sort of see the the sand and whatever um, there's moisture and gunk and rubbish so there's obviously been a fair bit of oxygen and moisture getting into this tank and that's what's caused the problem cement in steel boats is actually fine a lot of people don't understand um, that you know most trawlers have cement in them for for ballast and trim and things like that and there's a lot of misconceptions around cement in steel boats these are the first couple of pieces i've pulled out you can sort of see this here is dimpled right down you can sort of see around this area in there sort of quite thick over here maybe five mil at least over here six starts out at six it's probably still five around there but around here it's maybe maybe one or two mil getting a bit thin there wherever that was and then this one here, you can sort of see just generally the whole plate is starting to reduce in thickness and there's sort of areas where it goes down a wee bit more. That's where you end up with your pinholes and those little dimple parts. So there's no point in trying to pad weld this. Pad welds where you basically sandblast it clean and then you run your like MIG welder back and forth, back and forth and you just build the thickness up. That's fine if you've got a small amount to do but this is, you know, panel replacement time. So if you've got large areas like this, anything large I would say is more than maybe six inches by a couple of inches. Um, yeah, that's, it's time to start looking at panel replacement. And then you can kind of see the rest of the panel itself is quite thick. But then down here where those pinholes started, you can see how thin that's getting. So, yep, definitely time to renew that. And then I'll probably knock all of this cement out actually. 
The reason being is brew peg is a little bit bow heavy. A couple of the old owners of brew peg over the years have talked to us about the trim of brew peg and they were sort of saying that if you load the front too much, she does go bow down. She's got a nice big flat stern um, for basically she was built to go over bars. So nice big flat stern, lots of buoyancy down the back end, but a very fine bow. So if you put too much weight up front, it tends to nosedive a wee bit. Um, and you know, coming back loaded up with, with fish and so on, she was oftentimes pretty low in the water and they'd just punch on. She was a waterproof boat, so they'd just punch on into whatever it was. Um, the fact that there's cement up on the bow means that I can actually take some weight out of the bow without affecting anything. So I think we'll do that. I think I'll knock that cement out. It also means that I can really assess the steel underneath the rest of it. There's obviously been problems in there, moisture, you know, oil, grit, whatever, getting into that tank. So I need to get in there and see that steel. So perfect excuse to rip that concrete out. <laughs> Right, the next plate is out. So it's pretty scabby in there, so I think we might have a bit of rust damage on this one. Definitely some cement here that needs to be smashed out. You can sort of see there's bits of cement here or whatever. Some old scabby bits there. I'll get in there with the um, hammer drill and we'll get rid of all of that. But the actual plate itself didn't look too bad. So there's definitely surface rust, which is normal. And there's some pinholes, etc., around wherever that cut was. Let's flip that over. So. What do we do? So it was right. That's looking at it in the orientation that it sat. So I did a random cut down there. It doesn't look too bad on this side here. When you flip it over, it's very thin. There's pinholes, sort of randomly over the back here. There's a lot down in here, really thin down in this area here. So yeah, that plate was shagged. What I can see though, this plate is pretty good. So it's it's pretty much six mil thick all the way through. Um, there's no real thinning on this edge here. Um, there's six mil all the way through until you get to from about here it starts dropping down it's only maybe four mil over there maybe three mil something like that and that makes sense because that's sort of the waterline of where any sort of moisture and junk would sit on top of the cement so there was definitely some getting down the side but there wasn't enough oxygen in this area to really go through the plate because you can still see the plates pretty thick all the way you know along this edge here it's only in this area here that it's bad so either way this cement's coming out and we'll We'll get into those plates and get those replaced. So I've marked out these dotted lines. That's the top of the cement, and then that's the bulkhead, and then there's the top of the cement, bulkhead, huh. top it's of the cement. It's the cement, is it? And look, there's a hole there, there was holes there, and there's holes there. Yeah, right. It's, it's right like on the, rim the of water it. line. Yeah, right. If there's moisture or whatever, I think it's filling up. And or it's whatever, sitting on there. And sitting there. So, right. And some of it's coming down, but most of it is in that in this area. It's a condensation. I and where's the moisture coming from? Uh, and this is a hole on the deck. I don't know. I don't know is the answer to all of that. Um, oh, we well, I think, I think the pinholes would probably suck moisture in and out as it gets hot and cold, hot and cold. The last thing you want trying to get into the water, trying to launch, is to find out that you've got more rust in the hull that you didn't think you had. What's really good about this is that we need to get good at taking a piece of this boat out, the hull or anywhere on the boat, cutting it out, welding the new piece in and getting on with the job. So don't think of this as like, oh my gosh, now it's a huge delay, because it's really not. It can't be. We, this is, we, we've done enough. Dame's done so many of these panels. We've checked everything we need to on the boat. This is going to be a fast job. It's, it has to be. We have to get very good at it, right? Yeah, I definitely. I, I don't think it's that, that dramatic to have to fix it. Um, it looks impressive. You, you know, <laughs> the, I yeah. mean, this is a part of the boat that has to be incredibly strong, particularly with us, because of what we're going to do with the boat. It's not, it's not like a... A normal boat, you know, it's, it's not a private boat that's getting normal treatment, it's a 
private boat that's been treat, treated commercially, so it's got to be strong. Treated like a rally car? Tre no. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, what? So it was we're almost not, enticing and then I... We're no. not doing jumps? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. The simple thing is water or moisture or something has sat basically on top of the cement and just corroded it out. Um, so simple, simple task is basically then cut out. So I'm thinking one panel to replace all of them. I'll cut along that solid line there, come follow down this diagonal to the curve that I've put in here, and then straight down to the keel, and then I'll cut it off at the keel level just like this. So I cut it basically straight in with a nine inch. I'm gonna hammer drill all of this cement out, get rid of all of that. Really? Um, yeah, yeah. I was thinking about this. That's a big job, isn't it? Yeah, once I got the side out though, it's not that complicated because it's just it's just straight in with the, the hammer drill. Are you, you're not replacing? No. Cause, you're lightening the front? Yeah, because the front's bow, it, it drives bow down, mm. so there's no need to put weight in the front. You want to make it lighter. So It's about strength too though, isn't it? Yeah, it doesn't add that much strength though. It's more about trim. Normally they put it in for trim. That's interesting. Yeah. No, but we're going to add some weight in yeah. once we're in the water and we know the trim and, yeah. you know, we've got to fill the tanks, we've got to... Into yeah, the we've yeah. got to, we, there's so much to learn, so we'll, we'll trim once we know. But um, it's, it's really impressive how unafraid you are of cutting open the. <laughs> you, 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 you're into the bells of the boat, it's amazing. That's true. Yeah. Open bell surgery. Open bell surgery. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's just wrong. <laughs> it's fantastic seeing the keel, the, how it's made, you know, yeah. you, can, you can, it's just there, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's not a complicated build. Nah, simple as. And while I'm here, I'll clean up some of this, like they've, they've smacked into something at some point and bent, like they've sort of mushroomed it out. Mm. So I'll clean all of that up while I'm here. I'll just mm. grind that smooth and that'll take at least 0 0.001 of a knot off the boat. <laughs> <laughs> we're going downwind, we're screaming down. Dame's an S X uh, yacht racer, <laughs> so half a, half a knot is a big deal in his head. <laughs> it's just training. No, half a knot doesn't mean anything. If you're ever wondering how to figure out where a bulkhead is on a steel boat, it's just like a house. And the other thing is you can see the weld. So the plate will dimple where the weld is. So if you follow that line up, as you go up onto the shiny plate, it'll start to sort of warp and dimple along those weld lines. So you'll get a real clear sort of, sort of wrinkle in the plate as to where that weld line is. So the thing I'm worried about is, you know, wood does tend to follow gravity so what I'm thinking is, if that line there is the uh, bulkhead, that water, if it can flow that way, maybe it's been sitting against that bulkhead yeah. and that bulkhead might be eaten out on the, on the side. When know. we did this plate, I'm pretty sure we had a good look at this area and it wasn't too bad. Could you see right th down that bulkhead, could you? Take that with a grain of salt because I missed these ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's they, just... they wouldn't have been completely seen see through ball at that point. No, probably just, not. They're just starting to go, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Although it looks like it's been about what ten years to two eight like Yeah, this is not a fast thing. Yeah. This is this is ten years of not maintaining this part of the boat or something. This is a this is long term rust. And and that's one of the great things about being out on the hard stand for longer than we expected mm. is this stuff's showing up now. So I think what the key thing to do though is to get in the water as soon as possible before anything else shows up. <laughs> <laughs> Race the rust. And in my my theory is salt water will solve the problem. <laughs> yeah. Still love salt water. Caught behind the nation blinds. How to reach for the city lines. This ain't where I belong. Ain't looking me mind on what I become. I've been running. Looking for something, digging deep since '99. What I thought was gone was sitting in my pocket in plain sight all alone. I think it's time for me to go burn all bridges, all I. Along the way, fell between the foam, pulling the stitches. Time to let go, so come what may. Look at that.
all that moisture seeping out of the cement. You can see it sort of dribbling down the boat, but there's heaps of it. So it's pretty waterlogged, that cement. So no matter what, that's coming out. So long, farewell, bye bye. Let's have a toast full of lost old eyes. And my crooked little heart that seems so rebellious. All right, we're getting there. These thin bits, a couple of there, one there, they're held on by welds onto the bulkhead, so that bulkhead's a bit rusty, we might have to do something there. Um, but there'll be welds somewhere along here holding these on, and that's why they're a bit hard to get out, so we'll take those out bit by bit. Um, but we've got the bulk of the plate out, so pretty much as I thought, it looks like the water is sitting on the cement. You've got the three layers of cement, and pretty much that's where the pin holes line up. So. Um, we'll just knock that cement out, we'll clean all of this up, I'll probably sandblast in this area just to make sure it's absolutely spotless. Um, and then, yeah, I think we'll be right. I don't think this is actually as bad as it looks. Um, this is a relatively straightforward repair. The steel in here is a few flaky bits, but nothing dramatic. Um, we'll knock all of that paint off anyway, just to be absolutely certain and have a real good look at what the condition's like. Um, and maybe some areas will sandblast down. I have done some pad welding in here quite a while ago, two years ago. There's some up on that side and some up on this side um, to build up some areas. Uh, but I couldn't necessarily see into this area because you can see that hole there was pretty much all I could really use to, to access into this area. So there's no way I was going to see any of this. Um, I have tried putting cameras and things down in here before, but I've found them to be pretty difficult to use and, and never really that accurate, as well as ultrasound. I've also tried ultrasound and I have zero faith in that. Uh, readings were just absolutely garbage. So. I always prefer just to cut it open and have a real good look. Um, it takes a bit longer, but at least there's no subjectivity then. So next step is get these little bits out. And we'll start cleaning up. The sky is blue, the sun is high. Sitting here on my own. I think of you, you're on my mind, you know. To me, that's all. Before I get too carried away, what I want to show you is the radius in these corners. Now I don't have a plasma cutter, it's died on me. So I cut them out of the grinder by doing multiple slices in various directions until I can get it almost all out. And then that's a five inch disc diameter. So I come and grab a brand new grinding disc that has the nice thick edge on it. And what that allows you to do is get the grinder and, and literally hold it up in there like that and you end up with a perfect radius. I've already done one up the top there. You can see that's, once that's ground back and we've 45 it, that's gonna be absolutely brilliant to weld onto. The reason you wanna do this and go to this sort of trouble is you never wanna have a square corner or a sharp corner on any of the plates that you're welding into the boat because that corner will be the first place that it cracks. It doesn't matter if you're a fantastic welder, um, the chances are just because of the design and the stress and the bending of the boat, you're gonna end up with a crack there. So if you curve it and you get it, that nice sort of radius in there, Radius number doesn't really matter. You can do a small, you know, it might be a 40, 50 millimeter radius. Anything is better than a sharp edge. Um, the bigger the radius, the better. But um, yeah, five inches is normally enough for pretty much any panel on a boat. Well, 
And there you can see you've got a nice radius that links those two straights. And then on this edge here, it's nice and clean. So I've cleaned up the edges and then I've given this a raise. You can see there's a couple of nicks in there that might be a little bit deeper than I'd like them, but that's fine. Once we 45 this in, that's gonna weld up beautifully. Now that we've cut those little random bits off the bulkheads, it's pretty much as it's gonna be. I need to get rid of the cement now. So time to crack out our one grit sander. This thing's a bit of a beast. It's just a hammer drill with a, a pointed chisel on the end. It's perfect for smashing open concrete. This is a good example. See the red lead paint that's still on that original keel? That's the original paint, so it's 50 odd years old now. And it's in pretty much immaculate condition given how old it is and that it's been buried under cement. And that cement's actually pretty good. You can see there's no discoloration in it. But if you look further up where there has been water getting in, if you come back here where there's been basically water seeping down the side, the, the cement is in garbage condition and so is the steel. But it's not the cement's fault, it's the fact that there was oxygen and water getting into this tank. So had there been no oxygen and water, with cement there's absolutely no issue having it next to steel. It's a common misconception. It's not the cement that kills steel, it's always oxygen and water. Well finally, it's finished. After many, many hours is what I'll be able to say probably next week. But we have managed to get this lot out. So you can see it is chipping away relatively nice. Um, it's pretty hard going. You, know, you can only take small bits out at a time, but it is coming out nice. I'm pretty chuffed that there's no rubbish in the actual cement itself. It means that the cement was put in well. I mean, that's obviously evident by the quality of the original steel, but um, yeah, you can sort of see underneath the cement Generally the steel's pretty good. I don't think we're gonna have any issues. You can see up here where the waterline is, there's like, a, it's basically a wee dimple in there. So a lot of this paint will be rubbish. That'll all come off. So we'll get in with the hammer drill and we'll actually bash all of this paint off as well. This is a pipe I put in years and years and years ago. Um, and the purpose of this pipe, it actually comes out in the coffer dam with a screw on lid. The purpose of this pipe is if this uh, tank is ever ruptured, it'll fill up with water and I can undo the lid on this other end of this pipe. It goes all the way through the fuel tanks and finishes up down in the coffer dam. I can climb down in the coffer dam, undo the lid, and I can tell that this has been ruptured without actually having to dive and do any physical work on the boat under the water. Um, so if we're in the ice or something where we can't dive, this is a real easy way to tell if that tank is ruptured. Um, and then I can put the lid back on, we can carry on. This tank can be completely full of water and it doesn't affect brew peg stability at all. Um, it's, a, it's a minor tank in the scale of the boat. This is a pretty small tank um, compared to the rest of the boat. And that's one of the survivability things with brew peg is it has multiple con uh, compartments, watertight compartments. So we've got the crash bulkhead, above that we've got the anchor room, then we've got a fuel tank on each side, then we've got a coffer dam down in here that separates the fuel and water, and then we've got water tanks. So from this part forward, it's pretty much all liquid anyway, so if we rupture a tank, we don't necessarily change the stability much in the boat, but um, we also don't necessarily lose the boat as well. So um, a nice little safety feature. So that's what the plates look like on the outside when they're pieced back together And I'm not very good at doing puzzles upside down and backwards But that's basically the underside of all of the plates. You can sort of see we've got a lot of corrosion happening There's a lot of sort of general wear so the corrosion itself has basically taken a, a skim off the whole plate So it's not like localized. It's across the whole plate. Some areas you've got very localized pitting This one here hasn't gone through but it's very very deep uh, this one here, there's like a big area that's quite deep. That one there, the whole thing's a bit sort of knackered. So, good thing we opened it up. We needed to know this. So the next job on who hasn't launched yet wins. We'll go in and bash out the rest of that cement on these three different layers. Um, I'll also get the hammer drill, I'll get a new chisel. I've, my old chisel's dead, so I'll go and grab a new chisel and we'll get in there and bash out all that paint, so all of the rusty areas and the paint that looks a bit average and, and all that sort of stuff. 
and then we'll get in and sandblast. So whether we do it or whether we get the sandblaster here to do it, it just depends on what we're allowed to do. Um, as you know, we're not allowed to sandblast in the yard and most of our gear has been packed up for sandblasting. So we've got some bits, like we've got the blaster and we've got the actual nozzle and everything, but we don't have a sand sieve anymore. Our, our old one's practically dead. And we don't have a compressor. Um, the old compressor over there is, uh, needs rings, so I can't actually get enough air out of it. And our little new compressor won't be big enough to run the sandblaster at full tilt. So just depends on what we can manage. We'll give it a go maybe ourselves, but it might be that we get the, the professionals in, which is a cost, but it's something that, you know, it has to be blasted, it has to be done properly. Um, once that's finished, we can then start templating up, get our steel, get a plate cut, and then start welding it in. I thought I'd show you something. If you think that I'm doing a lot of work with our steel boat, let me show you this guy down the road here. So just a couple of boats down from Brewpeg, there's this big trawler that they've completely chopped the back end off. So you can see they've leveled it from the deck up, it's all gone. They've completely gutted the cabin um, and they're doing a heap of work. You can see up the very front that there's a couple of patches missing on the hull. There's a whole stack of them on the other side. Um, it's been in and sandblasted a whole bunch of areas where they're plasma cutting out, but that's yeah, that's a big rebuild those guys have got on their hands. Kind of makes me feel proud that we've only got a little wee hole to deal with. See you next week.